And we've got another question of the day that I'm super excited about. Reason why uh, this is GED style. They love to combine different topics into one problem and you guys get all in a muddle. Okay, so let's take a look at the different concepts I have here. So the first thing you're going to see is I have a diagram to interpret. They've given me my information in a table. Second thing you're going to see is this is a word problem. Ah, oh, that freaks a lot of us out. Let's go ahead and read the word problem. I'm not even going to look at the table quite yet until I know what to look for. Okay. It says a frame store lists its prices in a table. Yeah, we noticed. <laughs> to the nearest cent. Oh, there's some rounding directions. To the nearest anything is rounding directions. Now, I'm always going to pay attention to this last. We'll deal with rounding last. Okay. What is the price per square inch of the extra large canvas? Um, again, I've told you this before, but you guys know, as soon as somebody tells me to find the something per something, I get really excited because the directions are right there in the question. It says, what is the price per square inch? So this idea of anything per anything, well, that's a rate problem um, or even a slope application problem. Um, and so we've pulled in another concept here, but then there's a fourth concept hidden here. So, oh my gosh, we have a word problem. We have a table. Um, we have this um, rate problem, price per square inch, but we also have this square inch. Remember that anytime somebody says square anything to you, square inches, square yards, square meters, square, um, any kind of square unit, square miles, they are implying area. Okay, well, the only thing we measure in square inches is area. Okay, so they've asked me, what is the price per square inch? Again, I'm focusing in on that statement because I know that means take the price. Take the price. I'm going to start with the price because they started with the price. And then per it. Remember, per literally means divide. To per something is to divide it. That's why we use a slash to, to uh, both for division and to abbreviate the word per. And I'm going to do the price per square inch. So I'm going to divide that by the square inches or the area. Okay. Now, now that we know what we're looking for, now we'll go to the table to find it. So we're doing the price per square inch of the extra large canvas. So here's my row for the extra large canvas. The first thing I need is the price. The price for what? The price of the canvas. And so there's the price of the extra large canvas. The extra large canvas. And I know it's a price because it has a dollar sign. It's also labeled price, so that helps. So the first number I need is that $40.95. Now here's the issue, and you might see it. The second thing I need is the number of square inches of the extra large canvas, also known as the area. They did not give me the area of the extra large canvas. They gave me the dimension. This is in inches, so this is 20 inches by 25 inches. I'm going to have to do some extra work to turn this into area. Now, if you've been working with me long, you'll remember that to find the area when given the dimensions of anything rectangular, and just assume it's a rectangle if they don't tell you, then you're just going to multiply the two dimensions. And you're like, Kate, but I forget that. And then hit up your area for, or your formula sheet. It will tell you to find the area of a rectangle, rectangle multiply the length times the width. So I'm going to do that. 20 by 25. I should totally be able to do that in my head. I think that's 5,500 fired, Kate. It's early. Y'all, I'm making this video in the morning. Can you forgive me? Okay, so I get 500. So that means the square inches or the area is 500. So now I have the other number I need. Okay, so I'm going to take that $40.95, the price, and I'm going to per it. I'm going to divide it by the square inches or the area. The square inches or the area. So let's do that. $40.95 divided by 500. And when I do that in my calculator, I get... Sorry. Error. I have fat hands that touch the wrong buttons all the time. But when I put that in my calculator, I get 0. 0819. And a lot of students panic about this number. They don't know what to do with this number. They say that does not look like money to me. And so what they'll do mistakenly is move a decimal place. Don't you dare move decimal places. They matter. You're multiplying or dividing your number. 
uh, by powers of 10 when you move decimal places. Do not do that. What you may do is you may throw away the digits that are too small to matter. So we know where money stops. Money stops after two decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off my number here. I'm going to round. That's known as rounding. Now, the important thing to do, though, is before you throw away this number here, you ask yourself, is it big enough to matter? So consider the very next digit, the, one, the first one you're about to throw away. Is it five or higher? It sure isn't. So it's not big enough to matter. And so this little 19 here will die without making a difference to your eight cents. And we find out this thing is eight cents. Eight cents what? Eight cents per square inch. So for each square inch of canvas you buy, you're going to pay about eight cents. Um, again, this is a complex problem for a lot of people. Had a lot of different steps, a lot of different information thrown at us. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments.